Hello again my beloved students. Just couple hours ago I uploaded my last movie in which I was talking about the daily sudden geomagnetic pulses which are being recorded around the globe almost every day at times which depend on the geographic longitude around local midnights. If I would wait with the movie a little bit longer I would show you the best example of such pulse which I ever seen since I've started to deal with the space weather. This rapid drop of magnetic field strength, which was recorded by Kiruna Magnetometer Station, hit the incredible value of 500 nanoteslas. or even 800 nanoteslas if we will look at the biggest difference. If it doesn't tell you anything, then compare it to the last G2 geomagnetic storm during which the disturbances were reaching around 350 nanoteslas. This single downspike is twice so strong and currently there is no storm at all. But this jolt was strong enough to be recorded as well in UK. In Lerwick its strength reached more than 400 nanoteslas. In Heartland it's weaker, more than 200 nanoteslas. It seems that the X component was affected mostly. But let's look at data from other magnetometer stations. It looks that even the southern pole was affected at this time. Those readings are from Marston Station. But not that far away, on Macquarie Island, there wasn't any signs of this event. At KC Station, the jolt was at KC Station, the jolt was much weaker. but it was recorded even in Poland. And Africa. Besides, it visibly affected the rheometer readings. And the best is, that I have absolutely no idea what caused it. I'm sure, however, that Earth is currently moving through a very bumpy terrain. Magnetic orientation of the IMF is jumping like crazy since the afternoon 5th of September. But the biggest shift took place next day around 4 UTC. Check out how it affected the magnetosphere. Besides, the shifts were connected with a solid dose of density spikes. Which by coincidence were hitting us at the time of the daily geomagnetic jolt. 
but words won't tell you so much as pure observation. Just watch. There is more action than in movies with Steven Seagal. Now you should ask if all of this affected the planet in any way. Here is the answer. Any doubts? During the second half of the day, the velocity of solar wind started visibly to grow. Temperature jumped rapidly at the time of impact. Can it be the delayed CME which caused so much discussion for some unknown reason to me? Maybe. But I would say it is a coronal hole stream from one of those coronal holes which were facing us recently. There is a clear increase of the density before the impact of faster particles. Besides, the density spikes seem to appear much more often a couple hours before the arrival of fast solar wind. Increased density affected the interplanetary magnetic field without any doubts, but BZ component reached minus 10 nanoteslas only twice during the impact, and it remained on the positive side most of the time. So as for now, there is no geomagnetic storm. Noah agrees with me. Although it seems that the initial impact during which BZ reached minus 10 nanoteslas for a short time was enough to cause this sudden plasma penetration visible on Kirona rheometer graph. Yet it is much too big for such weak IMF polarity shift. For example, on the data from Luxella station, the disturbance is much weaker. And what makes me wonder at most, the auroral power wasn't affected at all by this event. However, the energy flux started to grow during the impact of faster particles a couple hours later. Still, 47 gigawatts is not enough to call it a geomagnetic storm. I would be really glad if I would find anything in the data what would explain those sudden geomagnetic pulses. But as I said, there wasn't almost any activity on all of those monitors. However, the impact from 6th of September is a different story. Entire geomagnetic field was visibly disturbed by this event. Look at the response of the electric potential in the ionosphere.
Before the impact, negative potential was placed over the northern hemisphere. During the passage of frontal density wave, the polarity turned upside down. Differential grew rapidly. Then the ionosphere started to freak out, couple hours before the velocity started to grow. Differential dropped rapidly, what was visibly connected with increased seismic activity. In the afternoon, the situation started to calm down. Then, just before the midnight, activity started to grow again. It was probably caused by the passing of a sector boundary, which was separating two parts of IMF with opposite current flows. Enlil shows a clear polarity flip. Notice the sudden drop of high energy protons on GOES readings. This is a nice opportunity to talk about polarities of coronal holes. In my previous movie I was talking about two coronal holes with opposite polarities placed next to each other on earth facing disk. White field lines are the positive ones and are the source of fast solar wind which contains mostly protons. Negative black field lines are causing gusts of electrons. But now we need to include the depolarity of all connections. Positive field lines repel positive particles and attract electrons at the same time. Just as negative field lines suck out the protons and repel electrons. That's why during the impact of positive coronal hole stream the amount of low energy protons was increased while the electrons were visibly decreased. When we entered the opposite stream, directions of current flow flipped by 180 degrees, what caused the protons to disappear. Soon after this shift, Earth took again its daily dose of geomagnetic disturbances, what was probably affected by the flip. On Norwegian magnetometers it started one hour earlier than the day before and took place for much longer time. But at the same time, the impulses were weaker than during smaller space weather activity. Anyway, after the IMF polarity flipped, we were hit by a second frontal density wave, which was followed by the second fast solar wind stream. Such divided bursts on Schumann resonance graph took place during last three sector boundary impacts. So I think that I can make a safe assumption that it is connected with each other. For a nice end, couple movies which show that everything is just an electromagnetic field, even so called neutral atmosphere. Class dismissed. Be safe. Peace.